So I'm Olivier, um, I work at the Design Museum as a head of digital. Uh, I'm now I'm mainly working as a project coordinator on uh, the European uh, project uh, collections of Ghent. Uh, this should have been a duo presentation, but Annelies couldn't make it because uh, she got ill, but she's joining us uh, online. So I hope everything goes well. Um, <clears throat> So the first case is uh, about collections of Ghent, uh, which is basically an, an initiative uh, where we try to um, bring together uh, heritage collections from five very different um, cultural heritage institutions, ranging from a museum to the archive to the more um, immaterial um, heritage um, collections. And um, this initiative uh, basically all started um, from a much broader initiative, namely um, Oslo, um, which uh, was founded or initi initiated in uh, 2012. And it stands for, or it stands then for the Open Standards um, for Linked Administrations. And in 2016, they changed it to the Open Standard uh, for Linking Organizations, um, which is of course much more interesting um, because it better fits the whole idea of uh, the triple helix uh, approach. Um, so what is Oslo and, and what does it mean um, for cultural heritage? Um, so let me go back one more slide. In 2019, uh, a group of uh, cultural heritage experts and experts on semantics and uh, Digital Vlaandre uh, came together um, to create this vocabulary to describe cultural heritage. Um, and it's, it's basically um, uh, an application profile uh, that makes use of other international um, profiles or standards. So it's not a purely um, Flemish standard, but what makes it very interesting is that it's a, it's a profile that uh, tries to connect um, across domains. So it doesn't only try to connect um, cross heritage domains, but it also tries to connect like domains like mobility, uh, climate, uh, sensor data, um, traffic, all these kind of things. And they do it by um, defining these all these little building blocks um, uh, for example, the ones in the middle are based on CIROC CRM. And then you have all these smaller blocks that are more generic blocks that are shared over all the vocabularies. Also, the vocabulary for uh, mobility, um, for weather. And uh, those are things like how do you describe a person, how do you describe a place, um, etc. At this point, there are two application profiles uh, for cultural heritage. So there's one um, that describes objects, and then there's one that describes all the events concerning the objects. So um, uh, who made the object? When was it first published? Uh, at what exhibition was it shown? Um, Etc. Um, and of course, as I said, it's uh, very much based uh, on the CIROC CRM uh, standards, uh, which is uh, a, uh, um, a model and it makes use of RDF. So it makes use of the idea of triples, uh, where you have two concepts. In this case, you have the person, uh, Joachim, 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 Joachim Winkelmann, um, and um, a human-made object, uh, the Lacon group. And then uh, by use of triples, you can connect uh, these two uh, different concepts, which is, of course, um, the whole idea of uh, linked open data. Um, and then, of course, uh, why Oslo and why Oslo uh, again, cultural heritage institutions. Um, it was an initiative uh, that was uh, coined by our department um, for culture. Um, and so their um, expectation from the Flemish institutions is that we um, deploy collection data as open data, we make it visible, we valorize it, uh, but we also do it accordance uh, to the Oslo exchange uh, standards. And their bigger picture is then that it would allow for connecting organizations uh, again across uh, domains. Now we have these two very uh, specific cases. Uh, the first case is the one in Ghent, and the other one is the one in uh, Antwerp. Um, I'm going to be focusing on the one in Ghent, where we use uh, um, a decentralized uh, approach, and Antwerp uh, works from a more centralized uh, approach. And our approach is that we have all these cultural heritage institutions, which all have their own um, uh, collection management systems. Um, they have their own way of storing their images, um, but they are also the owners of their own collection. And so what we want to do is we want to um, keep that ownership um, at, the, uh, collect at the institution or the organization itself. And we developed uh, together with IDLab 
um, the, the, the specification of the linked data event stream, which is then published uh, by the um, institution uh, themselves. What is the linked data event stream? It's basically um, a collection of uh, what they call immutable objects, and immutable objects means that once you publish a piece of data, an object, uh, let's say, for instance, uh, this bet uh, by Lobkowitz, um, which belonged to Lobkowitz, um, and then it can never change again. It can change, but then you have to um, publish a new version of that object. And that's why it's called the linked data event stream, because it works with event streams. Um, and it's a specification that normally was used um, in sensor data space, space which is uh, much faster data. Um, but it's also very interesting uh, in case of cultural heritage, because it allows us to um, publish different um, um, uh, records of an object at different uh, points of time. Um, so in, in terms of uh, data preservation, this is also very interesting because it would mean that we could, in theory, backtrack uh, how an object was described, uh, let's say, last month, but eventually also last year, and maybe if uh, the specification um, keeps standing uh, 10 years ago. Um, so the linked data event stream um, it's interesting uh, because it only focuses on the replication and synchronization of data. Uh, that means that it doesn't uh, concern itself with creating APIs. Uh, it doesn't concern itself with indexing, with creating query interfaces. A query interfaces, it only concerns um, with the replication and the synchronization at the data source. And it does this on a very uh, periodical um, way. So um, in this way, it also makes it easier for um, the organization, or what we call the service sites, um, to publish their data. Um, and then you have all these kind of applications, right? You have the publisher sites, which is the, uh, the museum, for, for example. Then you have the consumers, which could be Europeana, which could be uh, the Flemish government, which could be uh, the app we just saw. And they have um, specific concerns uh, on how they want to index um, the data and how they want to um, uh, create their knowledge graphs. And that's something that we uh, are putting on the consumer uh, sites. Um, so if you look at this in practice, uh, once, the, uh, we, once we have published a linked data event stream, we have an object and it's uh, built out of a JSON-LD. Um, for example, uh, as you can see here, uh, you have a human-made object, uh, which is part of a collection. And that collection is, uh, uh, the term used in the institution is Hescholike uh, Apparate, but this is, of course, a Dutch term. And then um, by using JSON-LD, we can also refer to the same term in the AAT, which makes it uh, machine readable in all kinds of different languages. But there are also concepts um, like, for example, Nova. Uh, Nova is an uh, um, uh, uh, appliance um, producer based in Tongeren, which doesn't have an uh, authority record yet. So we published our own authority record uh, using uh, statement hence slash ID slash concept to refer um, to that uh, same term. Um, this is important because if you look at the data, um, how it's described in Atlip. Atlip is the, um, the collection management system uh, we are using. Um, it's very flat data, so it's not linked data yet. Um, and it's also um, not really structured, or it's, it's really hard to get the data out of there uh, cleanly. And once you start using these um, international standards and vocabularies such as CIRUC CRM, it becomes much more uh, readable. Um, so uh, this, is, this is a nice um, example of how CIRUC CRM is an event-based specification because you have a material thing, it's produced, and it's produced um, in an event. And that event took place in 1972, and uh, participant product, so the product of that production is found at that URI, and it has been produced by an agent uh, named Nova, and, it has, and the production has taken place in Tongeren, and uh, the activity or the role of that um, producer was that he was uh, the producer. So, but all these different kind of uh, very um, detailed information are all described in linked data and are all resolvable uh, using uh, URIs. Um, uh, at the same time, uh, we also uh, stumbled upon a larger problem. Once you get the data out of uh, Atlip, uh, which has a very 
um, specific data structure uh, built for that uh, product. It's very hard to put it back in there uh, because there are a lot of fields or input fields in Atlip um, that have the same uh, classes or the same uh, properties in CDOC CRM. And then once you have published it in uh, JSON-LD or in your linked data event stream, it's very hard to do the meta, uh, data, data round trip back uh, to the system. So we, start, we, we looked into um, uh, other services and we found one uh, by Pact, uh, which is now Memo, and they have this SEST, uh, uh, which is an invil book. So it's like uh, registration um, guidelines uh, based on spectrum um, standards, which uh, has URIs referring uh, to the fields in Atlib, uh, so in the collection management system, where that speci specific value uh, came from. So that way we could put it back into the system uh, if we wanted to. Um, then we also uh, publish uh, together with linked data event stream uh, shackle shapes. Uh, this is important for uh, developers because it's a way for them uh, to validate the RDF graphs, but it's also, also interesting uh, because it shows what kind of data types are expected in, in, the, in the JSON LD, how much, uh, so, so how many times they are expected. If it has a min count one, it means that it should always be one, like, in, like a URI or an ERI. Um, but it also shows um, to what um, CDOC CRM property it belongs, and then also the class uh, that it should uh, be part of. Um, it's perhaps very technical, but it's a very nice way to make sure that these kind of publications are also aligned uh, across different, uh, let's say, cities. Um, and this is an example of a pattern. So we have this uh, way of creating uh, URIs, which is the URI strategy of StatGent. Um, and now um, the Oslo validator can take in our linked data event stream and they can give an error if the pattern should not uh, comply to this uh, uh, rehex um, expression, um, which is a way for us to uh, validate data streams uh, also very on an agile um, level. Um, then we also, um, uh, of course, link to uh, the IIIF manifests uh, where uh, the links are to the IIIF uh, image API um, and in the manifests are all the uh, information uh, concerning uh, right statements, uh, who's a photographer, um, um, the Creative Commons uh, licenses, uh, uh, etc. Um, and um, we, we also deliberately chose um, for separating um, the manifest um, from the linked data event stream because there's a very specific reason that IIIF has manifests. It's for um, describing technical metadata. And if you would go to uh, the manifest itself, uh, you would see that there's almost no information on the object itself because that's not the purpose uh, of IIIF. But in the IIIF manifest, you will find a link um, referring back uh, or dereferencing back to the um, LDS uh, object. So this way, uh, the circle is uh, complete. We also make use of a Thurman network or a kind of Thurman network. Um, so we publish uh, our own authority lists. Um, and in these authority lists, uh, we refer to um, uh, um, shared authorities, such as the AT, such as the whole Getty vocabulary system, uh, Wikidata, uh, RKD, etc. And we use these, um, these as keys to then um, reconcile uh, the different concepts on a city level or on an application level. And that way, we don't have to put effort in uniform as a, um, uniforming um, the whole uh, thesaurus or the whole concept network of all these institutions, which, which would be um, a very um, hard task um, to do. And maybe it's not even uh, advisable because then you start losing like these kind of um, more detailed descriptions or more um, uh, institutional unique ways of looking uh, at, a, at, a, at a, let's say an artist uh, or, or a concept. Um, so the LDS is part of a bigger ecosystem, it publishes and it synchronizes. Um, and then we have on a city level, um, it publishes these linked data event streams for us. And they have their own query interface, which is a virtuoso, so it's like a Sparkle endpoint. Uh, and that's already an application uh, on a city level uh, by Ghent. Um, and they uh, then create these kind of uh, knowledge graphs, uh, which are also interesting. I'm not gonna deeper into this. Um, and then uh, you also have the ambition, for example, uh, Stadgent 
um, to, to put this data in their, in their own data ecosystem. They have data on mobility, on uh, uh, where there are a herd of sheep in the city uh, and, and stuff like that. So <laughs> that's, that's something that concerns the city and not the cultural heritage institution. But at least we provide them uh, with the best and the most recent or most up-to-date possible uh, data. Um, and within the project, we also have an own application uh, which makes use of this knowledge graph. Um, so it's, it's a generous interface uh, uh, which you can browse to through using uh, terms uh, such as an uh, uh, um, uh, creator, Sacri Edmond, or, uh, or the, the concept of um, uh, toys, uh, the city, the car, etc. And then you can find all these objects belonging to that concept uh, over these uh, different uh, institutions without having to change uh, the data at the source. Um, and this is only possible by um, referring to AT, to RKD, to Wikidata as really universal keys, as handles to um, connect. Um, and I guess that this is also embraces the whole idea of decentralized um, data. And then we have, uh, an, we call it uh, an immersive experience. It's like a pavilion uh, that travels through the city of Ghent. Uh, it stops in three neighborhoods and it's Again, another application that makes use of the uh, linked data event stream uh, to create a more um, digital storytelling form of uh, experiencing uh, the collections. Um, yes, and the same uh, graph is also uh, available in there. Uh, I have to show the slides, but thanks to the partners, of course. <laughs> 